Hi, it's Professor Davis. Here's your topics checklist for sections 72, 73, and 74. Well, in this chapter, we want to introduce ourselves to inferential statistics. That's where we want to take some uh, sample statistics and be able to use that to estimate what population parameters would be. Sometimes we can't, we, we can't guess those exactly, they kind of move around, so we want to be able to construct confidence intervals, intervals of values, That's so we can say that, well, we're pretty sure that the uh, uh, population parameter is no smaller than a number and no bigger than some other number. So that's what we mean by computing confidence intervals. So in section 7.2, make sure you take some time to look over this uh, video lecture. There's a lot of material in here that kind of lays the groundwork for the entire chapter. Uh, first, we want to be able to find critical values for various confidence levels. And um, there's really three common confidence levels, 90% confidence interval, 95% confidence interval, and then one for 99%. Those are all listed on page 332. Uh, you also see a table of critical values in the course information area. And uh, so you want to print that out and be able to use that for your homework. And uh, certainly that will be included with your next test, that piece of information. Uh, then we want to be able to determine the margin of error for a given sample proportion. And uh, there's Formula 7 1 there that shows you how to do that. We simply need the sample size we need the confidence level and uh, then from that well and we also need the um, uh, 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 population the sample proportion p hat p with a little wedge over top of it and then from that we can compute the margin of error in other words that's the maximum amount that we want to be off by think of it that way and then on page 333 uh, that lays the groundwork for constructing a confidence interval for a population proportion P and then uh, uh, so make sure you look over that that's a four-step procedure that's uh, easy to follow and then uh, on page 334 you'll see that we want to be able to write a confidence interval three different ways first the uh, kind of the mathematical way the using inequality notation with less than signs uh, plus minus notation where we have uh, P hat the sample uh, statistic plus or minus the margin of error and then finally interval notation where we simply write the lower bound and the upper bound of the confidence interval in parentheses that's where our calculator uses and I'll talk about how we can use our calculator to get these confidence intervals at the end of this video uh, then we want to be able to uh, uh, determine the sample size that's needed to get a desired confidence level and you'll see formulas 7.2 and 7.3 uh, talk about that. So there's section 7.2. Section 7.3 now, that's really kind of the same idea, only now we want to estimate the population mean mu. And these, this is under the circumstance that the, uh, uh, that the population standard deviation is a known value, that's sigma the population standard deviation and also it's also good for large samples if we have sample sizes uh, above 30 so we want to be able to uh, construct a confidence interval for the mean the four-step procedure that's on page 346 make sure you look over that the same idea using different statistics and uh, then we want to be able to determine the minimum sample size required to estimate mu and that's also on, that's on page 349 you'll see that formula there so that's fairly easy to go through the thing that's important with that is we want to be able to uh, always we, we, well, we want to know to round up to the next higher whole number to so that we cover the confidence level then finally in section 74 uh, we want to talk about uh, estimating the population mean whenever the standard deviation is not known when that's the case, or we have small samples, we want to be able to use a different distribution that addresses these. That's called the student's t distribution. That was named by after a, uh, that's a pseudonym uh, named after a uh, mathematician whose name is W.S. Gossett, uh, who, d who derived this distribution for small samples. 
And so what we want to do, a couple of things in this, in this section, we want to be able to cho choose which distribution we want to use, whether it be the normal distribution, compute one of those Z alpha over 2 scores, or the T distribution, and our critical value will be T sub alpha over 2. And figure 7, 6, there's a flow chart there that shows you exactly how to do that. And then we want to be able to construct a confidence interval from mu with sigma unknown using the four-step procedure on page 358. Now to get the critical value we want to be able to use table A3. You'll see that in the appendix. That's also in the formulas and tables document that's in the uh, course information area. So you want to be able to print, you want to print that out and have that handy. So for exercises this week in section 7-2 uh, we want to practice uh, problems 5 through 31 odd, page 340. In section 7-3, starting on page 352, 5 through 25 odd. And then finally in section 7-4, page 365, problems 5 through 25 odd there as well. Now allow me to take a minute to just talk about how we can use a calculator to get these, uh, to help us get these confidences. So what we want to do is to just hit the stat button go over to tests and then scroll down here. Now the, our first stop will be right here option 7 on my TI-84. That's Z interval. That's for those problems I was talking about in section 7.3 when we're computing um, intervals um, uh, when the standard deviation is known. Go down one more. That's the T interval. That's the confidence intervals when the standard deviation is not known. Those were for the applications in section 7.4. And then finally, if I scroll down here and I get to A, I'm at one proportion Z interval. That is for confidence intervals for a sample proportion. Let me quickly show you how to use that. So we'll put in the number of successes. Let's say it's 25 and let's say the sample size is 153 and the confidence level we would want let's put in a 99 percent confidence interval and then we can go ahead and calculate now and then here's our answer notice the uh, sample statistic p hat the sample proportion is about what 16.3 percent and then the sample size is given and then up here in in interval notation there's the lower bound of our uh, population um, Z interval and the upper bound of the confidence interval is about what 24 percent so that's how we can use our calculator to verify our answers and get these um, confidence intervals rather quickly so there is your topics checklist for section 7273 and 74